I didn't know about that until Dinah and I have been up here for the last five days on what we've called our Barnett Show Listening Tour Leg One, because we're going to be back here a lot. And we go around, we're going around talking to county commissioners, talking to city planners, talking to people who are involved with this, and someone brought that up to me. I didn't know that. In Houston, in Harris County, we have to have our ballots printed in English, Spanish, and Vietnamese. We need to have that same kind of sensitivity toward people be, to make sure they do get the notice, that they actually can read what is sent to them. Change the format and make it look like a lawsuit when it comes, where across the top, across the banner, it says, you have been sued. Have it go across the top saying, you very much, Jeff. Thank you again. Let's give him a big hand. Safe trip back home. Lewis, did you want to say anything else about the, Lewis had a couple of comments real quick about the, the uh, Rule 37. I'm so sorry, Chris Payne is supposed to be here. I'm, I have a horrible feeling that he had one of those delightful, being a former flight attendant, I could just imagine he probably had some sort of delightful experience on his trip back from Michigan. Yeah, he's, he's probably under the new rules for two hours on the tarmac, so, you know, I guarantee you he's stuck someplace. Now, I just wanted to caveat uh, on the uh, force pooling in the Rule 37. Because we're going around in Gas Drilling 101 talking uh, a great deal about that because it's something that has, has come along after they went to people and said, here, just, just sign a lease and we'll drill a hole in the ground for 30 days, we'll be gone, you'll never know we're there. Well, it seems like there's a lot they forgot to tell us. So uh, the position of this organization is and will continue to be as long as I have anything to do with it that we are against force pooling and Rule 37 exceptions within the Barnett Shell. The reason for that is, quite simply, forced pooling, regardless of what you call it, is nothing more than eminent domain of your mineral interest. They are taking it against your will. Who is to say that you have to sell it at the price that they want to buy it at? Even if you're 100% pro drilling, I'm not, I think it needs to be a little bit further away, but even if you're 100% pro drilling, you should be able to say, what you're going to sell your minerals for and who you're going to sell it to. Force pooling takes that right away from you. Rule 37 is nothing more uh, than legally sanctioned theft of your mineral interest because they don't have to pay you. At least you need to know that if they do force pool you because of uh, a, a case called Finley um, a year ago, two years ago, two years ago, they have to pay you 100% of the working interest less the cost of drilling the hole, which is referred to as four-fifths, and they have to pay you the going rate of the royalty interest. All in all, if you, have to, if you are forced pooled, your mineral payment, if you will, ends up being somewhere around 50 to 65 percent instead of the 25 percent royalty that you would normally get with, with a signing bonus, if you will. So what these companies are doing is they're going to Austin and they're filing for a forced pooling. They do that because they're trying to uh, um, raise the fear level so that you will call them and sign a, and sign a lease because I don't, want, I don't want to be left out. You know, I, I don't want to sell for this price, but I don't want to be left out either. But when there's still a substantial number of royalty owners who have not signed leases in this forced pooled area, they will go and they'll pull the forced pooling after having signed a few more leases. And then they'll go back, they're going, they're, they're supposedly going back in for a Rule 37 waiver. Because under a Rule 37, they don't have to pay you that royalty. So you, you can do something about it, and it's something new to us. We're going to have to join together and go to Austin and, and fight these kinds of things because Rule 37 and the Mineral Interest Pooling Act was made for a different time. Uh, in, in a different time and out in the country. It was never intended for horizontal drilling and, and there's where the trouble comes in. Now, one final thing. A mineral owner does not have priority over another mineral owner. You will hear these people talking about, well, the, the mineral interest is dominant in Texas, and it, it is. You, know, then you need to thank God you own your mineral interest because otherwise you'd have a choice at all. But uh, one mineral, mineral interest is not dominant over another. So you have the right to, if you don't want to produce your interest, then you, you, don't, you don't have to do that. And I'm sorry if my neighbor can't participate, because I don't. 
but I have the same rights not to participate as they do to want to participate. And what we're telling people all over North Texas, it would be no different if a developer came into your neighborhood and said, I would like to develop this entire city block and you're the only one who won't sell me your house. I think we need to take it. That eminent domain is not fair and Rule 37 enforced pooling is not fair. Thank you. Yes, ma'am, I'm sorry. Yes. That's exactly my point. We're going to have to go down there and argue that, but that is the place to argue that. No, no, that, and no, we really truly need to get get over our bashfulness and go down there and tell. Williams and the other person that thinks they're going to run for Senate. So if you treat us this way, don't even think about it because we're not going to elect you to another office. Well, there, I, I, if, we have to, if we have to do it one at a time, then we have to do it one at a time. I know there's two cases coming up in June here in East Fort Worth. And, uh, we'll go down there and argue that one. That's the, we have to play by the rules that are handed to us, and that's the ones that are handed to us. So, Thank you. today. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you have a question of interest that is foisted upon you as a person that didn't play one of the very part of their participate. I can't hear your question. Uh, yeah, if, you, if you have a working interest uh, foisted upon you uh, as an unwilling participant in an oil area, or gas area, I should say. Um, what are your liabilities as part of? Uh, what are your options? No, what are you? You come first of all. You're going to have a tax problem. You know, all this money's coming. Well, you can have if you have a tax problem, then you have a money problem. Well, no, you have a thirty dollar a month royalty check, and you have to hire an accountant to figure out how your tax yeah, no, is that. That's not. A, that's not a, a money problem. That's a tax problem. Uh, second thing is, what happens if something? Uh, at first goes wrong with that well. Since you were forced pool, I would say nothing, but since you there's have no case law, you have no case law, so. As a working interest, you're not a part owner of this well? Well, then you would be covered under their blanket liability policy. What if uh, something really horrible happens? I mean, well, like I said, since, since, we have, since we haven't been here before, who yeah. knows? There's that's no case law. That's the question I was wondering about, and I know there's, we don't have an answer right away, but. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, we, yeah, we, uh, thank you, Lewis. We, one of the, I'm so sorry that Chris is not here, but he's an attorney who's very familiar with that, and that's why we wanted him here to specifically address those questions, and I do apologize. But we can try and get the information out. Make sure that you all are on our list, that you've signed in over here and you're on our contact list, and we'll try and send out his information and his contact information um, on force, uh, so that